I'm Richard Cook and uh, today I'd like to tell you a bit more about my fast jet career. Uh, you may remember from the Shooting the Red Arrows video that I had developed this rear-facing camera rig which was designed and built by squadron leader Alan Voyle and some of you had expressed uh, an interest in exactly what cameras I used. Well this is the actual camera that I that I used. It's a Nikomat EL with a 24mm lens uh, taped up at uh, f5.6 uh, with a polarizing filter um, on which I set the polarization. It was mounted upside down as you see it in the in the camera there. You may remember from the Red Arrows video that I where I developed this rear-facing camera rig and Alvo designed it and built it for me and um, we did some very successful pictures of the team and then uh, the three of us that is uh, Ernie Jones the wing commander who flew me most of the time um, and me in the middle and Alvo on the right um, went on to photograph um, most of the RAF's uh, frontline aircraft including some that or uh, one that uh, wasn't in service yet which was the Tornado. I went up to Wharton to brief the test pilot um, who was uh, the chief test pilot was Dave Eagles um, on the IDS and I briefed him as to where he needed to fly. Uh, I also explained to the RAF that I really needed a test flight, which would be which I would shoot black and white, so that I could uh, get the pictures back um, quickly and check that everything was in order. And we could use that as a debrief to adjust the position of the of the pilot. I then asked for and got two sorties in colour for each of the um, each of the aircraft. This was uh, over the Peak District in Derbyshire. It looked like the moon I thought. This one was interesting. The pilot Dave Eagles had called me on the radio and said that he was falling out of position so I knew that he wouldn't be in the position that I briefed but I thought it would be interesting to take a picture so I did that quickly and I got this shot which is um, interesting because really his wings should be vertical in this in this picture um, in other words on the same angle as uh, as our wings in the camera aircraft but uh, he's falling out of position he couldn't hold the turn it's very difficult for dissimilar aircraft to formate on each other the NAT obviously has a very high rate of turn and, a, and a, a very different gust response to the other aircraft. So the pilots that are formating on the NAT really have to work very hard indeed uh, to hold position, despite the fact that Ernie Jones is trying to make it easy for them, of course. After the tornado, we went to photograph the Harriers, uh, one squadron. I went out there and uh, again briefed the pilots and again did a test sortie, again two sorties um, doing the colour shots. This one has quite a sense of uh, speed about it. You very seldom get that. Although my camera is a fairly slow affair, the film was uh, 64 ASA Kodachrome. Making it slower still, I've got a polarising filter on the lens, knocking down another stop and a quarter and I have the aperture fixed and taped at 5.6 which gives me a depth of field from infinity to about 10 feet um, which is plenty. <laughs> so I then allowed the nickel mat to choose the shutter speed um, which was in most cases pretty slow um, because there's no or very little relative movement between the aircraft. We're formating, we're all going along at the same speed 
and um, it, you know there's there's really little very little movement within the lens. Um, I can live with very quite long shutter speeds. Typically, would be anything from about 125th um, to perhaps a 60th. Um, but in this case, I would say that it uh, it was it was uh, a longer shutter speed than that. It was picking up quite a bit of movement in the hills. We then went up to RF Valley in Anglesey to photograph the hawk. This was before it went into service with the Red Arrows, so I went up there in the uh, in the Nat, and we landed, and I was able to brief um, the pilot who was actually the Hawk display pilot and he got the uh, formation position spot on first time. That is RF Valley in the background um, on Anglesey and so is that. This is interesting um, to look at the shadows on the ground. You can see that although the Hawk is not a large aircraft, the Nat was really tiny. The pilots uh, used to talk about putting them on rather than getting into them. I love the lighting on this one, it's uh, just the top of a loop. The Jaguars, four Jaguars, this I think was um, RAF recruitment advertising, similar uh, MO really, a test shot in black and white and then two sorties with uh, a roll of colour film in each. I did a rough costing on this, I was interested in what it, what it cost and uh, I didn't cost the millions of pounds worth of aeroplanes but I did work out that um, 40 years ago now we'd use 45,000 pounds worth of fuel. Now the fact is that that was not fuel that was used on the photography as such. Fast jet frontline pilots had to do a certain amount of flying every week in order to be current. It was called staff continuation training and it was the it was what was used to facilitate the photography so there was no cost no extra cost anywhere really because they would have been flying anyway um, it's just that they wouldn't have had any pictures to show for it here I left this uh, in with the shadows on the sea you can see how close the formation position is because the camera on the NAT is not quite, it's a little bit aft of halfway down. The nose of the formating aircraft is underneath our tailpipe um, and probably only about seven or eight feet down. So that would be the closest point of the aircraft and at, um, at the sort of speeds that we got up to and we had to sometimes use higher speeds than you might have thought necessary to make it more comfortable for the fast jets for mating on us. Yes, uh, Ernie, bless him, uh, rang up and had a word with the management at uh, Forley Oil Refinery and said that we'd like to uh, overfly, uh, which we did. Phantoms was a, a very interesting story here. They were aware of the head-on pictures and um, they especially repainted the ray domes on the nose of the aircraft to look all black and shiny which was very thoughtful of them. We were flying around sort of the Midlands and Wales doing this and it is very difficult for an aircraft like a Phantom to formate on a, on a little gnat and the further you go back the harder it is. So the second Phantom in this picture is is working the hardest um, because everything we do in terms of turns is exaggerated as it goes back. So we were concentrating on this and suddenly on the radio there was dagger 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 and uh, Ernie pulled buckets at G and swung around and you know we'd been bounced by some Jaguars on their way back from Wales and it was the sort of thing which happened at the RAF in those days um, for uh, air combat practice, uh, you were pretty much allowed to bounce or make a, uh, an attack on any aircraft you, you ran across. Unfortunately this was a, a big break in the concentration and came on the radio of Lost Dave, 
was our second phantom furthest away. Um, and Ernie said, I've got him straight away. Uh, he's an, an ex-lightning pilot with very fast reactions. And, uh, and before I knew it, we were alongside talking to him and um, you know, getting him straight and level and sorted out a bit. What had happened is become disorientated by this um, by this bounce from the Jaguars. I also wanted to take some pictures over a more urban landscape. Uh, it's it became a bit um, too obvious just to photograph um, fast jets on beautiful countryside over over Wales or Scotland or Derbyshire. <laughs> uh, Ernie also knew the station commander at Filingdales, which was the four-minute warning system up in Yorkshire. And uh, you're not normally allowed to fly within, I don't know whether it's five miles or ten miles, but uh, you, you have to keep your distance anyway because of very high-powered microwaves, which are bad for your reproductive organs. Um, however, I think Ernie had spoken to him and uh, it turned out that we were able to fly um, directly over the top. I don't want to speculate about uh, what happened to our early warning system at that time. <laughs> this was uh, one of the vintage pair, which was a pair of meteors. Um, we went down to um, Broadie to take some PR pictures for them. Uh, one was called Winston and the other uh, Clementine. And of course there was the Spitfire Ray Hanna, which uh, came to have his picture taken. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's post. If you have, remember to like it, share it, and tell your friends. Thank you. Next time, I'll tell you the story of what happened when I went to join the circus.